What's up everyone? As you can tell by the title of this video, my t-shirt and the lights behind me, we are talking Leica. I even had to put red lights behind me, I know, I know. A little bit much, but we're gonna have fun with this. Anyway, here to talk about my Leica MP 0.72 black paint film camera. And I got the uh, Leica 50 Summicron Rigid version two attached to this as well. Not gonna talk much about the lens, actually more about the body, about using the MP. Is it worth investing into it? If you're new to Leica rangefinder cameras, what are things to look out for? That's how I'm sort of approaching this video. So with that, let's get down to things. Let's start talking about the MP. Oh, and before we uh, kick things off, I do want to thank everybody who was very kind enough to like and subscribe based on my last video here of the Light Lens Lab 35 millimeter F2 8 element review. Thank you guys so much. And all the kind words that you left in the comment section really means a lot. And with this video, if you like it, I would love it if you clicked on the like button and subscribed as well, because I have a lot of great content coming up here a lot of different film cameras, lenses, some new stuff coming up, some interesting things for cycling and audio. I mean, just things that I'm really passionate about. And I'm also over at Geek Culture, so do check out their channel as well. We've done some great videos over the past couple of weeks, so give them a, a view and see what you think over there. Okay, let's talk about the Leica MP. Yes, people call this the creme de la creme of all Leica film cameras. This is, MP stands for Mechanical Perfection. It is the culmination of all the great cameras from the M3 to the M7 put into one. It comes in silver and black paint, chrome or black paint for that matter, and they are beautifully made cameras. Now, here's the thing I wanna do with this video is I wanna, I mean, look, let's, let's cut to the chase. This is a beautiful camera. It's made unlike most other cameras you're gonna see on the market these days, right? And I watch a lot of the YouTube videos you guys probably do with our everybody's, you know, we're doing these great road trips and seeing all these great cities and just walking around with this great music in the background, taking all these images. And it's like, I want to live that life. And maybe we all will soon. Some countries are doing better than others. But yes, this camera does bring that romanticism out of you. And it does make photography fun. And it does inspire you to take photographs. And that's something that Leica cameras have done so well over the years but I also wanna talk about some of the negatives about this camera. Some of the things that you need to look out for, especially if you are new to Leica, new to film photography, or maybe you have a Leica camera and you're looking to get in this. Is it something to really invest in? You know what I mean? Because everybody's gonna have varying opinions on this. These are my personal opinions. You may disagree with me and you may agree with me, or you may wanna add something in the comment section below, and I would say, please do so. I love having that conversation there, so I answer, try to answer all the comments that come in as much as possible. So yes, let's continue that conversation in the comment section, but let's talk about this camera right now. As I mentioned, I've got the black paint version of this and I love Leica's black paint. I mean, there's really not many things sexier in photography than a rangefinder in black paint. It really isn't. And Leica has nailed it. I, I know for a number of years, Leica has sort of stayed away from this glossy black paint because you know, some people don't like it. It's a fingerprint magnet, right? And also they changed the materials in the camera. I think it was magnesium alloy or some uh, various different materials. So, you know, black paint, when you have brass, that black and gold really does age well, but magnesium and black doesn't really age well, right? So they had a much more of a matte, more robust coating on it. This is a much more a softer coating. So it does, it's meant to age over time. It's meant to brass over time. That's sort of the, the um, beauty of this camera, right? Beauty of this paint. But you noticed when they came out with the M10R in black paint, that bad boy sold like crazy. Why? Because very few can do black paint like Leica. That's a commercial, isn't it? Sounds a bit like one. I don't think they'll ever use it. Anyway, moving on. So I got this secondhand, by the way. So this was not from the Leica store. I got this from Rice Ball Photography. By the way, they're not sponsoring me. I paid for this out of my own money about four or five years ago. The lens is my own. The t-shirt is my own. Yeah, these are my own things, okay? But um, I picked it up from there. And the story of how I got this camera was quite interesting is because I was actually looking for a film camera, medium format originally. But I walked by their window. And then I didn't know them at the time. This is how I first met them. Walked by. And I saw a Leica M3 in the window, you know, beautiful, chrome, stunning, right? I was like, that's from the 1950s. My God, it's a beautiful camera. Then there was the MP there as well. Black paint just glistened. Had a red shutter release button, not this one, but a different one on top of it. So the red popped. And I was like, oh my 
God, that camera is beautiful. I said that in my mind. Then my partner was with me and she says, wow, that is a good looking camera. Now, for those of you who know, when you got your partner says something is good looking, chances are you got to listen. Anyway, walked inside the shop, chatted with the, uh, the staff there were really kind, got to hold the camera, try it out. Never shot a film like a camera before. I did try like M cameras in the past, but never film. And I was like, what's the price of it? They told me, I was like, okay, that's way out of my budget. It, but you know, it's an MP, right? Right. Okay. Anyway, went back to the shop a couple times, looked at the M3. I was logically the M3 would have been the better choice because the price of the time was under a thousand US for a mint condition one. And, and then put a lens on it for a few hundred bucks more and I'm good to go, right? No, passion took over my mind. And this was the one that I got. And I don't regret it. I don't. I had to eat noodles for a few weeks, joking of course, but I had to save up a little bit more, but I'm glad I got this camera because this is a camera that I don't think I would let go unless I have to for financial reasons or something comes up in my life and I need to let it go. But um, this is something that I want to hand down to either my children or a family member in, in the future because it will last. It will last longer than me. Maybe I don't have to get sent to Leica for a CLA once in a while, but this camera is designed to last a lifetime or possibly three. It's that well made. Shooting with it, what's it like to shoot with this camera? It's, it's a heavy camera. It's something about the MP because it is brass on the top and bottom plates. It's a very solid camera. So while it is small, if you're coming from an M6, this is a heftier camera. It has more weight to it, which is good though, because sometimes having some weight helps in terms of camera shake when you're shooting at lower shutter speeds, okay? So sometimes weight is good. You don't always want something that's too lightweight because get that camera shake and something, yeah, can ruin an image. Especially in film, it gets expensive. Little weight's nice. But besides that, I mean, the advanced lever, beautiful. Listen how soft that is and how quiet that is, right? And you got your, sh your, your sh shutter speed dial here, which is beautiful, taut, nice. You got your rewind knob here, smooth as butter. Um, you know, the bottom plate here, it opens up, closes. It just There's nothing that creaks or squeaks on this camera. It is made like a fine tuned instrument. So people that talk about this camera and they wax lyrical about it, they are absolutely right. It is the creme de la creme of Leica film cameras. I would say the closest to this, of course, is the M3. I think the M3 is one of my favorite Leica film cameras to this day, not just because of the way it looks, but also the viewfinder. I'll talk about that in just a second, but this is, uh, this is it folks. This is the Patek Philippe of cameras right here. Let's talk about some of the usability aspects and pros and cons in terms of that. Now, if you all now this will be more towards the people that have not used Leica in the past that maybe want to get into Leica for film cameras because film, of course, is kind of getting very popular again and things to look out for. Now, so one of the first things you're going to notice about or using a rangefinder versus an SLR is an SLR. When you put a lens on an SLR, if it's a 50 millimeter, 35, 75, 90, 85, what you see is what you get. But with a rangefinder, that is very different. Now, case in point, there are various different uh, magnifications on rangefinder uh, cameras. This is 0.72. That's why I said 0.72 earlier on. There's 0.58 and there's 0.85, which you, I believe you can retrofit onto the, uh, or have it installed, I should say, inside the uh, MP. I believe you can do so by Leica, but it does come at an extra cost. However, the Leica M3 comes with a 0.91, which is almost a one-to-one -one ratio, which does make focusing a lot easier so much easier versus a 0.72. Reason there's a 0.72 is because, as I mentioned, it's not a one, it's not what you see is what you get. Instead, you get frame lines. So a 0.72 allows you to have wide angle lenses up to more telephoto lenses. So you could have a wider variety of lenses to show the frame lines in the, uh, the viewfinder versus the M3, for example, at 0.91, you can only show, I think, 50 millimeters and 90 millimeters in terms of the frame lines. Outside of that, you had to, if you want to use a 35 millimeter lens, you had to get goggles to put on top, on top of the lens in front of the, in front of the camera right here. So it was a little bit convoluted. I mean, it looked really cool, it looks really retro, but you got the goggles and the lens here, then you focus through that. So yeah, that's why the M2 came out, so you could get to those 35 millimeter frame lines. Anyway. Um, that's where it really does get a little bit confusing. And on top of that, as you want to use a longer focal length, 
the smaller the frame lines get. So then you have to compose this shot within these small frame lines. Then you have your focus patches in there that you have to line up to get focused because two squares come together. It's sharp in the center. That means your subject is in focus. Then you can move side to side or up and down. Don't move forward because then you lose focus to, you know, you know, recompose just to get the right, the right setting. It's, it's a challenge. It, it's a learning curve. It's not the easiest thing to get used to, but it's something that you can get used to relatively quick. Now, here's the thing. The more wide open the lens is, and in terms of the aperture 1.4, for example, or 1.2 or 0.95, the harder it is to focus because there's something just maybe a slight edge will be in focus, but the rest will be blur. And that can be very discombobulating, especially if you're trying to focus fast or if you're in a lower light situation. So in my personal opinion, or Leica lenses are not meant to be shot wide open on Leica cameras. They are meant to be stopped down because it makes it a lot easier to focus and you can then knock off shots faster and get the subject you want to be in focus or at least close to being in focus faster than sitting there and okay there's johnny johnny stop don't move wait 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 at one point four with a nice book okay okay i got your eyelash in focus is that your eyelash i'm not too sure okay and fire trust me your model's gonna fall asleep or they're gonna age before you get done with the photo shoot that way. Ain't gonna work. So a lot of people stop down with this. They go down to F4, F5.6, F8, thereabouts. So more of that focal plane is in focus. So you don't need to think about it so much. What you need to think about is how far you are away from your subject. Case in point, the camera in front of me, we're about 1.2 meters away. Look at my lens, 1.2 meters, pull it up. Camera's in focus and then I can fire and the image is taken. Right? If I'm at F2, it makes it a little bit more challenging. I gotta fine tune it ever so quick, ever so slight. And if you don't have great eyesight, it makes it even more challenging. Now, you can get a magnifier, which I do use on this, and you can get a diopter, which I don't have yet, that can help you nail focus better, especially if you do wear glasses. I don't like to wear glasses when I take images out of cameras. Some people do. If you do, you don't need those things, but if you don't, a magnifier will help you a lot and so will the diopter and that's uh, something I would highly recommend but it is an additional cost and these things from Leica are not that cheap. What is also something to take note of? Shutter speed on this. One over one thousandths of a second is the max shutter speed. So that means shooting in bright daylight, wide open, 1.4, 1.2. If you're shooting at 400 speed film, you're gonna need an ND filter. What is an ND filter for those who do not know? It's a piece of glass you screw onto the front of your lens and it's tinted like a sunglass and it cuts the amount of light that comes into the camera so you can then use the appropriate shutter speed to then shoot wide open and get that nice bokeh, that nice depth of field, a nice separation from your subject in the background. And honestly, if you look at a lot of the images that are taken from Leicas in the history of photography, a lot of them were not shot wide open. They were shot stopped down. They're stopping down at four, at 5.6, F8, et cetera, et cetera. So something to keep note of that. What else to know about this? Um, there's no self timer on this camera. If you want to do self-timing, do some self-portraits, not going to happen. You can have someone else take that full image for you. The M3 has a self-timer in it, but you got to find the right M3 that it, sometimes those work and sometimes they don't. But uh, they did remove the self-timers when they went into the uh, metering on these cameras. Speaking of metering, let's talk about that for a second because yes, there is an exposure metering on this, but it is not the most user-friendly thing. You get two triangles and a dot a left triangle and a right triangle and a dot in the center when you are exposed correctly. However, there is no gauge to show you how close you are to the center, like overexposed or underexposed. It's just an arrow that just keeps showing there and you keep having to move the shutter or the aperture until you see that dot and you're like, okay, there, uh, there I am. So on SLRs, there's more of a gauge and you have sort of a, oh, I can see, I need to, maybe a couple of stops away from being exposed correctly or not. It's a little bit more trying and a little bit, it slows you down a little bit more with a Leica camera. Something to take note of. It's not a deal breaker, but it will slow down your photography. Over time, you will understand how to use this camera and you won't need metering that much at all. As a matter of fact, if you stick with the same lens for a period of time and you're used to shooting the same kind of film speed, you'll be able to eyeball a situation and go, okay, I'm one over 125th of a second, boom. F4, I'm good to go, fire away, and your shot is exposed correctly. So you'll get that relatively fast, but in the beginning, it is a bit of a learning curve to it. As a matter of fact, I would recommend if you're new to rangefinders, is before we even take this camera out to go shoot a roll of film, 
is walk around your house, don't load any film, and just practice focusing, practice focusing, practice focusing. Understanding how to use the range, the range finder patch, understanding the aperture, and understanding your focal plane, and understanding what's in focus and what's not, and, and getting used to moving the dials and the advanced lever and everything else, and the rewind, get used to these things so it's tactile, so you're not looking at things, you just have to move your hands and it's all by memory. Because that's where it makes photography really fun with this camera. And it's designed to be that way, as a matter of fact. You just have to put the work in and the practice to become that photographer. And once you do, it's gonna be lightning quick for you, okay? So that's just a little tip for you there. Anyway, I love the MP. I think it's a great camera. And if you're a Leica collector out there, you gotta get this camera. You gotta get it sooner or later in your lifetime uh, if you have the means to do so. If you don't, then my second best bet would be an M3. Honestly speaking, I would get an M3. If you want it in black paint, send it off to someone like Kanto Camera, spend you know a, a whatever they charge for it, it will be a premium, but it'll come back almost exactly the same paint quality as coming from Leica, and it's gonna be beautiful, and it's a great camera. I love the M3. So that would be my backup to the MP if you couldn't afford one, but if you can't afford an MP, it doesn't get much better than this, folks. It doesn't, it just doesn't. If you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and stay safe, take care, and I will chat to you soon. Bye.